So we've looked kind of at the inner workings of an M14 and an M1 Garand when we were checking headspace. Now let's look at the bayonet, an often misunderstood from a maintenance standpoint piece of equipment and kind of look at what's going on inside of these and well, why there's an easy out sticking out of the handle of my bayonet. Let's go. Bayonets are an often misunderstood piece of kit because they're not numbered along with the gun. So nobody really, you know, if you're like me, you're a gun guy, you don't really want it. Bruno sitting over there waving his hands like this, you know, cut, 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 because I can't stand him either. All right. So here's what happens when you don't do the maintenance on a bayonet is that happens. So we managed to get this bayonet off the M14 apart. And I'll show you that we had to drill a hole in the screw heads to do it. We had to bore a hole down through the top of this screw and then put an easy out in it to torque it out after it had been soaking in coil for about three hours to dynamite that apart. We're going to get this whole thing. We're not going to take it the rest of the way apart. We're just going to convert it as it sits because some of these things are riveted. Some of them are roll pins. But this is the inside of a bayonet off of an M14. There's the release mechanism right there. And that is, um, there's a spring, let me see here, relighting, relighting. Where did that spring go? There it is, right there. It's up beside the handle, see that spring? So we gotta get all this, we're just gonna convert it in one piece and then try to put the parkerizing back on it because it was sharpened by a trained rat. Bayonet off of my Garand also has the same easy out because the heads of these screws, they're so long and they're so deep down inside that the whole screw just rusts down its entire length and it gets jammed in there and you're not going to get it out. Now, this bayonet doesn't look nearly as bad, but it has what's not showing up on camera very well is it has a layer of sugar rust all over the inside of it. And let me get this other side off here. I haven't had it off yet. Here we go. So it doesn't look that bad, but I want to save this bayonet. This is one of the ones that wasn't just a cut down 03. This one, the blood groove, uh, doesn't come all the way down. Um, it's made by Union Fork and Ho. Um, so definitely a Garin bayonet that's age appropriate to mine. So we're going to uh, boil both of these. And then we'll talk about parkerizing them, which I know is sacrilege, but we're going to do it anyway. The phenolic on this handle here, we're just going to scrub that down with a toothbrush. This will all wash out. There's nothing rusted here. We just want to get rid of this oxide on the inside of the handle. On this repop blade right here, we got to go in and we got to glue that little problem down. This is just, this is modern repop handle. We'll just go ahead and clean that up. And then that'll allow us to take all three of the bayonets that we were dropped and put them back together again, and uh, we'll do that. So I took a piece of wire and bent a small curve in it with two hooked ends so that it was possible to just lay it across the gap and it fills in inside of this acroglass. It's underneath it, the pencil's pointing at it, and the arrow's telling you where it is. It's a dog bone with no deep cut. This way, when it all sets up, we bridge the load across the gap so it'll have less of a chance of breaking this time. Out here, you see there's just the slightest amount of squeeze out that tells us that we have glue through the entire joint and that'll just knock off when it gets hard and bang, we're back to, uh, we're back to original Chineseum repop. Well, now we have the screws that we're holding together the handles. And as we can see, there's some rust impacting. So what I had to do, I had to drill a hole in the head of this. And as you can see here, the easy out is still setting down inside of my, um, my screw here. So we'll take my crescent hammer here. And the beauty of these things is it works on English and metric fasteners, outstanding. Clamp this down on here, and then we'll just take this easy out and wind this out of the socket, okay. So what do we do with this? We have a pretty rare, I don't know rare, but we have original screws. Do we just make new screws? 
Not really. What I'm going to do is boil these things, convert them completely down, and then shine them up, and then stick a uh, a, a, a welding, a piece of welding filler rod right down in there like that, and lop it off right about there. And when we lop that off, we'll then take the TIG uh, electrode, strike on the top, and then burn down. So then we have a big blob of molten metal sitting up here and it'll fuse. And then once it fuses, I can cut it off, get it the right diameter, which we'll measure, and then cut a new slot. We'll wind up keeping the original body, the original length. We'll keep everything except for possibly the rather bent. This one here is pretty bent. So we'll bend all this straight and we'll wind up with original screws. All right, I'm gonna go throw these in the pot with the, with the blades and we'll pick that up. All right, so we're up on top of the vise here, back by my casting and hot work station, and we're just going to weld with a TIG welder. We're going to weld a piece of rod down inside that hole that we shaped, and it looks like this. So all I did was weld a blob of a metal up on top of this screw in order to fill in all the stuff that was missing. Now we'll go over the grinder and just just grind that around in a corner like that, grind it off flat, cut a new slot in it, and we're fat. I'm gonna come in close to the camera and grab a still right here. Can you get it that tight? And just like that, we go from that to that, and we kept the original screw. Easy, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. This is what my bayonet looked like um, after it had been converted, and we stripped all the oil off of it. And you can see that there was a lot of patina rust on the inside of this particular one. And then after we're done on the M6 bayonet for the M14, where we stripped all that off, so all we're gonna do is just give this a dunk in a boiling parkerizing solution and let it sit there for a little bit. All we're trying to do is just punch this up just a bit. We're not trying to repark. We're not trying to do anything. We're just trying to take a couple of years with the age off of it. I'll go back inside, wheel this, come back out and drop it in, and we'll be we'll revisit this in a moment. Just let it sit there. I'll be right back. So when we come out of the uh, out of the, the parkerizing bath, the phosphating bath, it looks kind of like this. 
You run it down with, with uh, water out of the spigot and then you come in with used motor oil and just oil it. This is used motor oil. There's no detergents in it. It's the same thing I use for all my bluing. I don't really save it too much because when you really need some, there's plenty of it laying around. And we'll just let this get in here. There's no time limit. There's no nothing. There's no soak. It is an unmitigated mess, but ordinarily I don't do this over the top of the workbench. We'll just get it all here and get it soaked down in. Okay. It's just a tray full of oil. So let me see here. Let me make sure you can see what's going on here. Yeah, you can. This is so black, it's hard to see it. So I'm going to wipe it off. I'm just going to take it off the blade, and that's what we're left with right there. And I don't know how well that's transferring, but boy, it, I wasn't trying to completely refinish this blade. It had been sharpened. It had been beat up. One of the handles was broken. We took care of that. Um, it was just, what we're trying to do here is make it look less ugly, right? It was only new once. Um, if there's some collector value in M14 bayonets, that's fine, but in this particular case, its residual value was zero. It was decaying. So now we're making it look better. Um, my blade came out looking like this because I left it in there a little bit longer, but this was a lot better than they started out looking. And there's zero rust. In the meantime, we just scrubbed down the handles with a commonly available industrial solvent. You would call it water. And uh, we were able to scrub most of the rust and the gack out of that. You oil those the same way. Just give it a little bit of a scrubby dubby. And then come in with some air and blow it all out. I mean, you don't... Here, hang on a minute. You guys that are aspiring gunsmiths, I'm going to tell you, you cannot... You cannot operate a shop without compressed air in it. You just can't so there we go go on ahead and oil that down that looks slick these screws look slick so the next shot we'll get up in a vise we'll put this thing back together again and take a look at it so hang on one second here what i'm showing you here with the white part of my finger there's a little stud there and that spring the small end sits over that stud and then there's a fairly large stud up inside this cavity here and that goes over that so i'm guessing this thing kind of fought me coming apart I'm guessing we get this, we set that spring right there, and I'm trying to make this so you guys can see through my hands. There we go. The spring sits right there. We set this down on that, and then we'll stick a, uh, a spud through this to see if we can't get it lined up. Yeah, that's too big. Let's try something smaller here. Oh, we can try the actual roll pin. We'll just take the actual roll pin, stick it in that hole back there. Here it is, right there. And then we'll drive the roll pin through. There it is. So now we have, right? And then we take um, the grips that we have previously slathered in um, co a commonly available lubricant called uh, used motor oil. And we'll stick this grip. This is the one the screws come through in. This is the one the screws screw into. We'll set that there. We'll take our newly sexed up screws and we'll run those in here and here. We'll grab a screwdriver and we'll hit this with a screw stick. Drag that down. Hit this with a screw stick. And where's the slot? There it is. I was asking myself, did you cut the slot? Now there it goes. Now it's coming in. All right. I want to go down too tight. You just want it to kind of snug up here. So now what we have is a much nicer looking bayonet for an M14. I think this is called an M6. I don't know. I'm not a bayonet guy, but I would have to tell you that this looks a damn sight better than it looked when we began. We've done the maintenance. There's no rust and it's adequately lubricated. And this is ready to be completely ignored and misabused for another 70 to 80 years. And on that note, people, it has been a pleasure.